All right, here they come. Every morning, I put peanuts out on the deck out there and I shake the can and these guys come down out of the trees and help themselves to a free meal. Sometimes when I forget to do it, they'll come up to the window and look in the window and say, where's my peanuts? Animals are awesome. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Three tips here. And today what we're going to do is a, uh, a good old-fashioned, easy gold refining video. And I just wanted to show you a couple things here before I get started. These are 14K gold earrings. They have air in them. And before we put the torch on this, what I've got to do is cut a hole in here. Otherwise, in, in the uh, melt dish, they could explode and spatter metal out of our melt dish. So I just tear them apart like that before I add them into the scrap bin here. Another thing to notice is on some of these earrings, like here's another one, this, the heart is full of air. So we've got to open it up so that it doesn't explode. But on these particular type of earrings, there's a little metal spring in here that's not gold. The way I get that is I just bend it back to expose the little metal spring and just pull it out. This I'll throw away and this will go into my bin. The more time we spend here cleaning the metal mechanically, I mean, after all, the purpose of refining is to clean the metal. So if there's things we can do uh, to mechanically clean the stuff before we start, that will help us in the end uh, speed things up. This is a sealed up 10K earring, so I cut those in half so they don't explode in the melt dish. I've had that happen before, and so I'm always careful to cut these up and let the air out before we put the flame on it. Here's our melt dish that we're going to use to encourt the gold. I'm going to zero that out. Now we're going to add our 14K material. And we've got 44.4 grams of 14K. 14K. 44.4 grams. Let's zero this out. Here's our 10K material. I'm going to add that right on in now. And we've got 60 grams of 10K. If you look down here, I've done some calculations. And you'll see that I've used a constant and a constant for the 14 and the 10K, and I need 94.2 grams of sterling silver to properly inquart this amount of gold. And our estimated yield, we take the 14K number in grams, multiply it by 0.583, we should get 25.8 grams of pure gold. 60 grams multiplied by 0.417 we should get 25 grams of pure gold from that amount of 10k the total estimated yield is going to be 50.8 grams so now we need 94.2 grams of sterling silver and i've got 94.9 grams of sterling this should be enough We'll take this and put it in our container here. And now we're going to go out, melt up the gold, and quart it with this silver, and proceed from there. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to in quart the carrot gold. In quart 
is a refining term used to describe creating an alloy that is one quarter pure gold and three quarters silver and base metals. So to get the amount of gold down to 25% or 6K, we must add additional silver. This is called inquartation. And it's kind of counterintuitive because we're trying to remove metals from the gold. And here we are at the beginning of the process, adding the metals in. It's important to add this additional silver because if we don't add the uh, additional silver and reduce the amount of pure gold in the alloy, then the next step is to do the nitric boils and those nitric boils will not be able to penetrate the carat gold. So we're loosening up the gold alloy, creating an alloy that's less gold and more silver so that the nitric acid boils can penetrate to the core of each piece of inquarted gold and remove all the silver and all the base metals. Uh, when we get done with the nitric acid boils, the gold will at that point be very close to high purity gold, almost three nines fine. But the only way to get it to three nines fine is to refine it with aqua regia after we pulled the silver and the base metals with these nitric acid boils. Here I'm going to stir the alloy with a graphite rod to create a consistent alloy. And I always stir it a little longer than I think I need to in order to uh, get a good consistent alloy of 25% gold and 75% silver and base metals. Now I'm going to remove the map gas torch and get it ready to uh, pour it into some water, a metal container of water to form uh, cornflakes and small granules and shot of the 25% gold alloy. By pouring it into the water, I create smaller particles uh, that present more surface area to the nitric acid boils in the next step. keep that torch on there to keep the gold molten while it's being poured but as the gold is poured out of the melt dish less and less gold same amount of flame it overheats and here in a second you're gonna hear a loud pop that always scares the pants off of me when it happens but it is a good thing. If you look down in here, it was an explosion from the hot gold hitting that water. And it forms these tiny granules that look like sand. And this is going to work to our advantage. Now we're going to pour the tap water off of our encoded gold. Put it in a beaker. There you can see the sand particles from the gold exploding when it hit that water in that metal container. I'm going to rinse it down into the container with some distilled water. And then we'll rinse all the tap water off of the unquartered gold with some distilled water. And here is our beautiful, iridescent looking 25% pure gold. I've got my silver jar set here. It's got some pieces of sterling silver in it. And what we'll do is we'll pour off the nitric acid boils into that silver jar. And any excess nitric that's in there will get consumed. Here is our encoded gold. And if you look, you can see those very fine particles, little balls of gold that happened when it exploded, when it hit the tap water as I poured it in molten. 
this is good. This is what we want. If it wasn't so frightening and I could find a way to do it over and over, I'd uh, use this method to get the gold into those very fine particles. I did see one guy that used a high pressure water jet to pulverize the molten gold stream as he poured it into the water, but I'm not that sophisticated yet. But we'll take those uh, small particles of gold. Now we're going to add some nitric acid from a previous refining. We're going to start pulling the silver and the base metals out. And you'll see here the nitric acid immediately starts attacking those silver and base metals and pulling them out. We'll set it up on the heat and let this react. I just set this on the heat. The time right now is 20 minutes past 12. So what we'll do is we'll time this and see how long it takes to do this small, quiet refining. This first nitric boil is complete. It's been in there about 40 minutes. I can tell when it's complete. When all of the uh, fume production ceases in there, so what we'll do now, turn this, get my uh, distilled water, rinse this down a little bit. And like I said earlier, the finely exploded little chunks of gold down in there is going to work to our advantage. Rinse this out a little bit. I'm doing this backwards from what I normally do because that burner set up is on my right. All right, there we go. We got a little water in there. Now what we'll do is add a little bit more used nitric acid from a previous refining and continue removing the silver and base metals with these uh, hot dilute nitric boils. Got some nitric acid here. What we'll do, measure out a little bit and add that to our reaction. Speed things up a little here. should wake it up a little bit. So nitric boil number two. Still reacting a little bit there. Well, I think what we'll do is go ahead and pour this second nitric boil off now. Put some fresh acid in there. left you can tell because it's reacting with that sterling in my silver jar but the gold is holding together nicely for us some more nitric acid. Just cover this up and let it boil. Nitric boil number three. All right, let's see what we got for time here. 
It's about uh, 3.30 now in the afternoon. I think this third nitric boil is complete. So what we'll do is pour this off into our uh, silver jar. It's going to react when it hits that sterling silver. Just exactly what we want to see. Let's add some distilled water to the gold. Put it back up on the heat. And now we'll add a little bit more nitric acid. And this will be fourth nitric acid boil. It's about 20 minutes past four and we've completed nitric boil number four. Let's get in here. I'm going to pour this off now. This is really going to react because there's a whole bunch of free nitric left in this solution that we're pouring off. It's really going to flare up, cause a bunch of fumage here. acid and this will be nitric acid boil number five this fifth nitric boil is looking real good what we're going to do is pour that off into our silver jar but before I do what I want to do is uh, transfer some of the silver out of this one into the one we're using here to pour these solutions off because we have almost dissolved all of the silver in this jar here so we need to add some more pieces of sterling silver continue to consume the excess nitric that's in there. Here you can see this fifth boil. We still got a little bit of color going on in there. Just a little greenish tint. So we'll pour this off now. It's going to make a whole bunch of fumes here. It's going to be a lot of active free nitric acid in this solution that I'm pouring off. It's got an angry reaction going on in there. Alright, let's rinse this off. Oh 
Oh yeah, the gold is looking excellent. And I think we're gonna do one more nitric boil. Just to be certain. Touch more water in here. And a little bit more nitric acid. This will be the sixth nitric acid boil. Number six. I'm trying to squeeze the last bit of utility out of this burner here and I think it's starting to fail so what we'll do I'm gonna take this down off of the heat now yeah it's not even hardly getting hot anymore and we'll get this thing out of here and get us a decent burner in here Morning hot plate. Put that on high. And even this thing is starting to act up now and not get real hot. We're gonna set the beaker right up here on that. Look at that gold, man. It's looking absolutely gorgeous. Nice and caramel brown color. So this will be our uh, Nitric boil number six. This is much better. Getting a lot more heat out of this uh, burner now. This is what I'm used to seeing. So we're going to pour off this acid again into this silver jar. It's going to make a lot of fumes. reconfigured the heater and the silver jar so now it's a lot more comfortable for me this is the uh, configuration I'm used to I add a little bit of water here I set this back up and allow this to boil in some water now this water boil is complete Pour that off into the silver jar now. Oh yeah, here's a look at the gold down inside the beaker. Looks real good, real good. Okay, sorry to uh, have to do this all over again. This is some gold-plated scrap that I have that was featured in an earlier video. It had already been sold, but the buyer backed out, so we're going to relist it. Here we're weighing the uh, shipping containers, one pound, four ounces. This is all gold-plated material, all of the carrot gold, all of the gold-filled material, and any gold plated silver has already been removed. I've been through this and this is all just gold plated material. The only precious metals it contains are the plating that's on each one of these pieces. I just want to make sure everybody understands that. It's gold plated material here. We're going to weigh it. We've got 24 pounds so we're going to take off two pounds for the shipping container and call this 22 pounds, 24 minus two, 22 pounds of gold plated scrap. Now back to the video. I'm going to add about 200 milliliters 
of hydrochloric acid. I'm going to set this up on the heat now. Now we're going to add some sulfuric acid. This will combine with any lead that's in solution. Form lead sulfate and precipitate out so that we can filter it out. Now we're going to add some nitric acid here. That's about 50 grams of gold, so let's try maybe uh, 20 milliliters, maybe just a touch less of nitric acid. I'm going to go ahead and add that right in. And now we'll cover this up and let this react. just added that nitric acid in and I keep forgetting to look at the time we're at about uh, 10 past 6 now that far along into the process misjudged the amount of uh, acid I'm gonna need so we're gonna add some hydrochloric here to this beaker it's about 80 milliliters just a little under we're gonna add this right on in now to our beaker What we'll do is start adding small doses of nitric and get our, see if we can get the rest of this gold to dissolve. Must be losing proficiency here because I'm usually pretty good at judging how much nitric we need. That was three milliliters. Put another three in there while it's still little bit on the chilly side all right let's look at the time here it is uh, 620 right now I just added two three milliliter doses of nitric I'm gonna add one more in here and hopefully that'll be enough to get all that gold to dissolve all right I've added nine milliliters of nitric. I'm going to add another three milliliter dose here. This will be a total of 12. We're almost there. I'm going to add another uh, just a little bit of nitric here. See if we can get the rest of this to go into solution. I've allowed the solution to evaporate down. Let's pull it down off the heat. Bring it down here and let it cool off. The solution is looking superb for a first refining. We evaporated it down to get all the uh, all the nitric out of there. Now what we're going to do is add some ice. Carefully. Got a filter installed in this funnel. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and filter the solution. 
any of your junk that's in here, you'll notice that it got cloudy when I added the ice cubes. That's probably silver chloride. I forgot to check the time. It's about 10 minutes to 8 right now. I was on the phone and I got to talk to my mother this evening for about uh, half an hour, which was very enjoyable. Let's get the rest of this solution to this filter. Got everything pulled through this filter now. Let's uh, transfer the filter to a clean filter flask. You can see there's a bunch of trash in there. Now what we'll do is pour the gold through the filter now that it's uh, I've never seen that happen. A bunch of gold come out of the bottom of the filter. We're going to pour the gold through a second time. See how it's kind of cloudy. See if we get some of that cloudiness to clear up for us. Second pass through the same filter does the trick happens is that filter gets loaded up with sediment and then it's better able to trap very fine particulate once it gets loaded up and our solution gets nice and clear alrighty we've got our solution filtered out and it looks spectacular crystal clear gold solution. I'm going to add it to this beaker down here. There were two things I said I was going to remember to do. It's 10 minutes past 8 p.m. And we're also going to reach down in here and get us a stannis test before we go any further, before we precipitate. Boom. Dark stain. Gold in solution. Here we go, the funnest part of all. Sodium metabisulfite. We're gonna add this now and precipitate out the pure gold out of this solution. Here we go, add one spoon. Bang. There's another one. Zoom in on this. That's two spoons. Three. This should just about do it. Let me put a half another one in there. So that's three and a half spoons of SMB. Stir it around a little bit. That should do it. Let's do another Stannis test. Make sure we've got all the gold precipitated. There you go. Negative Stannis means all the gold has precipitated out of our solution. After looking, I do have a little bit of a stain there. So we're going to add another half spoon of SMB. There we go. There's that white foam. We've got it all precipitated now for sure. 
this test right here, the Stannis test, is odd in that it's showing some color. I don't know what's in there. Let's just do another one now, make sure we got everything out of here. I guess we did have a little bit of gold remaining based on this test here. And now this test, the one we just did, is completely clean. It's fair to conclude we've got all the metal precipitated out of our solution now. We've got the gold pretty much settled out here. Looks real good. I'm going to pour off the waste now into my temporary waste container and then give it multiple rinses with water and hydrochloric acid. Here's what the gold looks like. After a single refining, it looks superb. Now I'm going to add some uh, hydrochloric acid to cover this up. Set this up on the uh, heating pad and give this a boil in hydrochloric acid. Gold has been boiling in hydrochloric acid now for about 15 minutes. And you can see it's got a little bit of color to it. So that means we pulled something, dissolved some of the gold or some other metal that may be in there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pour off this hydrochloric acid boil into our waste container. tell you for a single refining that gold looks outstanding let's do one more boil here with some distilled water. Look at that gold, man. It looks wonderful for a single refining. Put it up on the heat. And let's boil it in some water here right quick. This is looking good. It's been boiling in water now for about 10 minutes. We are ready to melt some gold. Let's get our gold in a melt dish. Let's just look at the clock here. Let's see where we're at with that. It is quarter after 9 p.m. So we're going to put our gold in this melt dish now. Just like that. Perfect. Let's get our gold over here on the melt table. It looks really, really good. But sometimes looks can be deceiving. Let's go ahead and start melting up our gold now.
Here's our little ingot that we just melted. It don't look too bad for just a single refining. Very nice. The time right now, 9.30 p.m. And uh, we were expecting down here. Let me see if we can zoom in on this. We were expecting 50.8 grams for an expected yield. Pull back. Let's see what we got for an actual yield here. Oh, 53.6. That's higher than what we are expecting. That happens sometimes. We'll take it. All right, I'm very pleased with this. Took about, well, well, what is it? Nine hours, 10 hours. I think I started the whole thing at 11 a.m. So it's 9.30, so about 11 hours, 10 and a half hours, something like that. Here's the pure gold nugget. It's good enough to be sent into the refiner. I will list, I will relist the gold plated scrap and put a link to it in this video in the description. This will conclude the video. Thank you for watching.